you have been regarded as the unlucky one in Lotus Racing this year. Um, with, with a lot of retirements, they need you to mechanical. What do you have to say about that? I think uh, I have gained the medal of the most lucky driver of the season, probably. And only at the end of the season, I went back to count how many failures I've had. And the numbers is impressive. I didn't even I didn't really count it during the season. I was not really taking care of it. But at the end of the season, I've counted something like 15 failures up to 19 races. <laughs> so that was impressive. It has been so far my worst uh, season ever, uh, all my life, all my career. And it's really down to bad luck because honestly, Heike hasn't had so many trouble. He's, he was able to finish races and complete races with the car in perfect form. But on my side, it seems that uh, I had to get all the bad luck. So um, I don't mind because in a way, I knew that the 2010 would have been a difficult season and I always took it as a, as a transition season. What it really matters for me is the 2011, especially because also Tony Fernandez has put together a very good package by engine and gearbox that uh, will make us uh, looking very good for next year. So I want to forget the 2010 and move on to 2011 because uh, it's the season where we can really start fighting. Do you think it was because of different driving styles? Will that no, nothing to do with driving style. A recurrent problem, hydraulic, which <laughs> failed most of the time, I would say 90% of the time, so nothing to do with it. But. You also, even with other teams, you're, you're famous for putting on a very strong qualifying performance, one lap wonder, and uh, why do people say that? It's Do you think that you are better during qualifying and when during race your performance drops? Is, is there such a thing? Well, it drops the performance uh, if you have bad luck and your car fails. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. You have less chance of failing during a one lap qualifying than a 60 lap race. That's the main issue. And this has been one of the troubles this year as well. Uh, often, even though this year I've had a lot of troubles in qualifying, but again I showed I was able to prove my speed more in qualifying than in the race because in the races after 15 laps <laughs> my, my, my race was already over. Can you uh, share with us your what's the future for you in Formula 1 now that you've competed for a very long time? Do you still see yourself racing for uh, a years? Well, apart the, this 2010 season, which uh, I took it as a transition season, um, I'm gonna face 2011 like a big challenge for me. Uh, for me and for the team, because we want to deliver, uh, we want to get the results, we want to score points, and I think if we can do that, it will be great. It will be great for me as well as for the team, because uh, anyone needs motivation, a team as well as a driver. And um, I was happy to really put the 2010 back in my shoulder, but now I'm really focusing on 2011 because I miss racing, I miss the fighting, I miss the challenge, and this is what I'm looking for for next year. Do you see Red, uh, Lotus Racing achieving what Red Bull did? It will take time if we, if we look back at what uh, Red Bull has been able to do with the resources they had from the beginning, I just show you how tough it is, the Formula 1 business, and how long it might take. For some people, you know, it never happened. Like, you know, I raced for Toyota, they, they had great resources, unlimited resources, and they never achieved what they wanted. They were never capable of producing a winning car despite the, the results. So it just showed that how tough and how difficult is the Formula 1 business. So I think Team Lotus and Tony are extremely committed, but they need to understand that it will take some time before they can uh, you know, reach the top. Even though I think now already for next year, Tony has done a good job because I've put a very nice package together, you know, gearbox and engine, which uh, make me feel confident. What you didn't like about this year's car? Apart from it. Yeah, I mean, reliability, obviously. Uh, 
But especially at the end, one day, once I have sorted the things out, the car was more drivable and back then I was capable of, of driving and pushing it to the limit. While at the beginning I was suffering a lot with, with the power steering and with the front suspension and you know, with several stuff which obviously we couldn't, we couldn't fix. But I hope that for next year we have more tools to work and uh, more uh, reliability and definitely more speed. You have tried out the Pirelli tyres, what, what, what do you have to say about them? They are very different from, uh, from the Bridgestone, so we need to expect uh, a change in the trend, a change in the, in the performance, a change in the characteristic, and as well, we need to change our car. So we collect some data, uh, but um, probably it's not enough. So it, it's going to be interesting because during the winter testing in February, we need to quickly find out what's right and what's wrong in the car and we need to react in order to be ready for the first race. What do you hope to accomplish with uh, Lotus Racing next year? I think the objective is to try to be in the top 10 and, and finish top 8. Uh, obviously this is only at the moment a dream which we have to turn into reality. And uh, given the, the package we have, we can do it. But now it's, I would say, it's all in our hands now, in the engineers' hands during the winter in order to develop, build, and design the car, which has to be quick and reliable. And then it's up to our, to our driver to deliver the result on track. But first we need a competitive car. So I'm confident, but I'm always very realistic. So at the moment it's hard to to say we're gonna be there. We, I, can, I can be certain and tell you that um, we're gonna be much, much better than the 2010. We're gonna be much closer to the top teams. But where we are going to be, it's for anyone impossible to say now. Uh, we feel, I feel we have the package to be in that position, around uh, the 8th in the Constructor Championship. But if you want to do that, we can also do better. But it, it's down now to the, in the engineer's hands during the winter time in order to develop the car dynamically and make, it, and make sure that the car is safe enough and it's all well uh, built together in order to deliver a good result. Um, what are your comments on uh, this whole issue regarding using the name Team Lotus? <laughs> Lotus Renault coming in next season, the possibility of that? But honestly, <clears throat> I, it, it was none of my business. Uh, I've been following it. Uh, I didn't ask much to Tony or anyone in the team. I'm glad that now we kept the name. I think fans in general recognize this team as the real Lotus team. And then, uh, the only thing I can say is that uh, I'm happy that we, we kept the name. First because Tony was brave enough with everybody in this team to take this, this team and the, the Lotus name back in Formula 1 after 16 years. And after, after all the, his effort and investment, it would be really a big shame if they would have taken it away. Especially because I believe after one year we have we've been established as a, a Lotus Formula 1 team in this business and people recognize us, recognize Tony, recognize this team as the real Formula 1 Lotus company, let's say. We're talking about Formula 1 only, so a racing Formula 1 team. No matter the way you want to call it, Lotus team, racing team, Formula Lotus team, no matter, but it seems that Lotus in the past, the Formula 1 Lotus team has been always something apart from uh, the Lotus group. It was a, stand, a standing alone company and this is what it's like now. So uh, I, I can't say it's right or wrong. Uh, be called Lotus team now or, or whatever. 
I can only say I met with that, um, the team, this team, and especially Tony, uh, can keep working as a Lotus team name, and especially can keep writing the story and the history of Fumo. Do you think that it will be any different if somehow, if the name is taken away, you have to be called something else? Do you think uh, it will take away the morale of your of the team members? Will it, will it change anything? Change performance? In the end of the day, no, I don't think so. It, it will only be bad, in my opinion, against um, the spectators and the fans. Because, honestly, all the fans we have had around the world, they all recognize this team, these people, this driver, like a Lotus driver. Now, taking this away, it would be a big shame and would be like a cheat against the fans. Because for one year we've been called Lotus team, and then you take it away and the team is still there, the people are still there, so... What did you say before? What were you doing before? I mean, it would be something like cheating against fans and uh, it would be bad so I'm, I'm really hoping I think the team is going to be hopefully going to be called Lotus team for next year because this is what the people want and uh, last question do you, you you have raced for many other teams before this is it different racing with this team is there a special bond here because the moment we walk into this factory we feel a lot of passion and there is and many things which uh, makes the team this team different and special. The name, uh, the place, because we, this team is born in, in a Lotus area. This is where all began. Uh, and because, in a way, it's a small team, like it was small in the past, and wants to become, again, a big team, like it was in the past. So, we are, Lotus has written history, and I think now Tony, with this team, want to keep writing story about Lotus team and Formula 1. So that's why this team is so special.